Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at the new audio analyzer patch that's introduced in version 89. Now for some people this might be hidden, it might not tell you that this has been added. Um, just bear in mind it is there, it's just hidden within the patch editor. And what we're going to be creating is something similar to the effect I'm just about to show you. So when I click on the screen, the audio will play. These rings will start uh, scaling and rotating to the pitch of the audio. And then once the audio kind of comes to an end, they should disappear. There we go. So the audio analyzer patch, uh, I'll go through this in more detail when we start from scratch. Uh, basically, we'll take a audio input, so that could be your microphone uh, or an audio uh, M4A, and then allows you to output uh, various effects depending on the frequency hit. And I'll talk about the difference between these bands when we get through the tutorial. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm just going to save this project and we're going to start with a fresh, clean slate. So I'll see you again in a second. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a blank project. Like so, I'm just going to maximize this. And I'm just going to import some assets. So what I did to create the audio rings is I just went into a photo editing program. So in this case, I chose Illustrator just to give me a vector. And I just created this sort of circular pattern here. I'm just uh, try and move it over here so you can see. So all I did is create an outline, added some dashes in uh, and change the kind of brush width. Uh, I'm just going to import that first. So again, with any, with any project, we have to do a bit of setup first. And I'm just going to make sure that that texture I use has no compression turned on, so we don't have any uh, pixelation going on. And then what I did is I went to add object. I'm going to add a rectangle. Make this fill the size and width of my project. Go to camera, camera the texture extraction and segmentation. Choose my rectangle, materials, add create. Set my material, and again, we've done this many times in our videos. Camera texture, alpha, present segmentation. So we've got our user segmented from our background. And then under advanced render options, I'm going to turn it off, use depth test. Okay, that's the uh, kind of easy bit done. Next thing I'm going to do is go to add objects and I'm just going to create another rectangle. Uh, just bear in mind that because I'm in a, currently in the middle of a, which is sort of semi heat wave, you, I may have to turn the fan on during this video. So if you hear a uh, fan whizzing, it's not my Mac this time, it actually is something of some use. So I'm just creating this rectangle. I'm just going to create a new material. I'm going to rename this material to be my audio ring. And I'm going to choose my texture to be my audio ring texture, like so. I'm not going to worry about the scale of this yet or its position. We're going to be controlling that largely through the patch editor. And I'm just going to rename this rectangle to be ring one. And then I'm going to duplicate it three times. So I want to have ring one, ring two, ring three, and ring four. And I'm just going to rename my user rectangle to be user and drag this to the very bottom so it's on top of everything. So now we can't see our rings, our rings are hidden behind our user. So now we've done all that, I'm just going to go to view, show patch editor, and this is where I'm going to turn my little fan on so uh, my computer doesn't start whizzing up too much. With the patch editor open, I can now show you some of the new features of version 89. So I'm going to right click in here. And a few things that have been added are, if we go to audio play, you now have this audio analyzer. You also have this option for Instagram music. So you can actually uh, take uh, music from your Instagram library. To enable this, you do need to go to edit platforms and turn off Facebook. And we may explore that in a future video, potentially. Got energy meters. So you've got a few new options within the audio settings. And just quickly do, doing a quick whiz check to make sure I'm not going to mistake that. There's a few other little things, uh, largely bug fixes. And again, when you first update or download, you can actually check the full list of features that have been added. I'm not going to go through all of them. Another useful thing is actually if you go to user interface, is a new thing. You now actually can import the 
picker UI and slider UI. So you no longer have to go through um, JavaScript to do this. You can actually now use this via patches. So this is going to make a huge uh, step forward to those who are learning Spark AR. You can now just use a patch editor to control everything, which is amazing, a fantastic leap forward. I'm not going to cover this because it's largely um, self-explanatory, um, unless people really request it. But anyway, let's just go back to audio. I'm just going to add my audio analyzer. So if we quickly have a quick look at what the audio analyzer is, it basically takes the input of an audio signal. This could be a microphone or um, audio clip. And then you've got various outputs. Each of these bands is for a different uh, frequency range. So we can have different bands allocated to different frequencies and that'll affect the um, kind of push or pressure that's going through from that output. I'm just going to add this patch first, like so. So this is where I'm going to consult my notes because I actually ripped this down so I don't uh, make any mistakes that are going along. So the way I'm going to control this is I'm going to use a screen tap. Again, just because the purposes of demonstrating this in a video, it's easy to use a screen tap for myself. If you're doing this with a screen recording, you just swap out the screen recording with a screen tap with a screen recording option. Uh, simply put. So I'm just going to go and add a screen tap. And again, I use screen tap just because it's the easiest way of showing something during a tutorial. I'm going to add a runtime. And with this runtime, I'm also going to add an offset. So what I'm doing here is uh, I just want to use a um, runtime value to toggle the visibility of these rings. So I'm just going to connect this screen tap to my offset reset. And again, some of this you could skip. So if you want to skip forward, look at a little bar at the bottom of the video and skip ahead till we get to the um, audio analyzer parts. But again, this is uh, just, set. I, I tend to work from um, left to right. So if it's less than 15, because the audio clip I'm going to use is around 15 seconds. So this is where we'd adjust for the uh, duration if we're using an audio clip. If we're using a microphone, we won't need to um, worry about that so much. Switch on like so. I want to make this to be a flip to turn on. And I'm just going to add an and. And I get... Oh, and again, everything I'm doing here, you don't necessarily have to do. This is uh, I'm doing for the purposes of um, the effect I'm trying to create in this video. OK, so where our audio input is there, I'm just going to import an audio clip from the AR library just because uh, it's more readily available and you'll be able to grab the assets yourself. So my AR library is down here. Uh, it's looking at some audio things on the patch library. So I'm just going to go to audio. I'm just going to choose this 90 sitcom intro one, which is 15, 14 seconds or 15 seconds. I'm just going to import that into my project. There we go. So with my audio clip selected, I can go over here to where it says add multi clip patches. And I click that and this will create everything we need for um, our audio to be uh, inputted to our device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the speaker up to the audio output on the analyzer. Then I'm going to hook the audio player to the input on the audio player here, like so. Uh, where we've got this multi-click controller, this is where we would have our trigger firing into. So to do that, I'm just going to drag from my AND to my play, and this will create a pulse for us, like so. So again, Spark does try and help you along the way. So there we have our um, audio analyzer in. So now if I was to simply screen tap, oh, sorry, screen tap, if my computer decides to uh, play ball, it should play the audio clip, which it isn't. So why is that the case? So a quick check, that's in, that's in. So the audio is linked. That's his plan, it's just, okay. My computer's being a little bit uh, temperamental at the moment. Okay, so now we've got our audio analyzer in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag from band one. Now I'm using between zero and 400 uh, megahertz. Again, you can use whichever band you want for the audio frequency you're wanting to uh, play with. I'm just gonna use band one for the purposes of this video. I'm going to add a pack and I'm going to change this pack to be a two 
a vector two, because we're going to be working with um, two values, which is on our canvas objects, which is our X and Y values. We don't have a, a depth. Uh, if you, but bear in mind, if you're working with 3D objects or planes or anything else that is vector three, you can also do the same thing. Just make sure that your pack is a vector three instead of a vector two. So with that in case, I'm going to just click and drag, and I'm going to add an add. And I'm going to just uh, add an add on two to our value. Then I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to add this one, add on three. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically um, offsetting the values to make the scale, when we get to the scale part, actually uh, visible behind the user. Um, because this has only just come out at the time of me recording this video, I, I haven't quite had enough time to play about with it um, fully. So I'm just going to select ring one. I'm going to select it scale and hook that up to my first add. I'm going to select ring two, do the same, and hook this up to my second add. Ring three, scale, hook up to my third add and ring four to the fourth add. And what we should have here is we now should have each of these rings being uh, gradually getting bigger from each other. So we'll just toggle the use off for a second so you can see we have these rings like so. Okay, now I'm just going to go back to my user and actually just make sure that's set to flat shader because I can sometimes forget to do that. There we go. Okay, so now we've done that. I'm just going to test this. So if I press play, it should fire. Um, it isn't. Did I put a greater than? Ah, okay, it's a my mistake here. I need to put a not after greater than and then look this up to the and. There we go. Let me just reset. There we go. So what I forgot to do there is at the moment it's going to not play until 15 seconds have passed. I actually want it to play before and disappear after 15 seconds. So I've got a not to reverse it. So now if I press play, it should scale and play. We're getting this kind of weird distortion going on here where it's not quite uh, marrying up. Now the reason for this is if you look at my pack, I only hooked in band one to the first value. So this is adjusting it on the X axis. If I drag band one back onto pack value second input and do it again, it will now scale on the X and the Y the same. So bear that in mind, if you're only scaling one axis, you can just hook it up into the one. So if it's a vector three, it'd be X, Y, and Z, for example. There we go. So every time it plays, I'll scale up like so. Now, actually, what I want to do is, I'm just going to pause that, there we go. So what I want to do is actually also want to make these uh, rectangles only appear when I want to. So I'm going to select all my rings. I'm going to go to the properties and click on the visible link there. And I'm just going to hook all these up to my and. Just so they only appear whilst playing, which is again, they're only going to play for, appear for 15 seconds and then disappear. So if I now reset and click play, they'll play. We get these animations kind of going, and then after 15 seconds, which is the length of the audio clip I've used, they should just turn off. Now, to make my effect look a bit uh, nicer, a few extra things I did is I went to AR Library again, and Patches, and I just it used the four color gradient patch. So and what I did is I wanted to give each of these rings a bit of um, colour to them. So for the time being, I'm just going to uh, break these connections just so we can see what we're doing. There we go. Just so I can see what I'm doing. I'll hook those up again at the end. So with a four colour gradient in, I then um, hook this up to a mix. And I want to change this mix to be a type colour. And I'm also going to create a transition. And this transition is also going to be a colour transition. 
and I hook this up to my mix as well. And then I go to my audio ring material, I go to the texture, and I hook this up to my mix, like so. So you should now have these colour blocks. Now to get those rings to just show um, up, I went to Alpha, turn that on, and I choose my audio ring texture here, like so. And I just changed each of these colours to be a bit more vibrant. So for example, I went with a green, a red, a blue, and a kind of pinky purple. Like so, so I've got this kind of colour hue going on. And to give them a bit of movement, I just created a simple loop animation. And uh, they hop to a transition. And I wanted them to rotate on the z-axis 360 degrees or one rotation. I copied this uh, transition and pasted it again. And the second duplicate, I'm just going to make a negative 360. And then I went to each of these rings, chose the rotation and made one of them a positive and the other a negative. So every other one is a positive. Hook this one up like so. And I want this one and this one. So ring two and four for me to be negatives. I'm going to adjust the speed in a moment. Just so not so crazy. There we go. And then I just made the speed something like 10 seconds so they played slower. And then when I hit play, they are scale and rotate. And again, this audio analyzer patch can be hooked up to any object uh, and you just make sure that you set it to a different frequency that you require for your audio clip. If we wanted to, this to work for our microphone, I'm just going to select my microphone here. I'm going to drag this into my patch editor and then hook this audio up to my audio analyzer. And I'm just going to create another speaker like so. And with this, new, with this new speaker created, I made sure that the audio was selected to be microphone. And then I hooked that speaker up to my audio analyzer, like so. So now this uh, speaker here will take the input from the microphone through the audio analyzer and play it. And then these should still scale accordingly. So that is a little in quick insight. I say quick insight, this has been about nearly 20 minutes uh, video looking at the audio analyzer and how to just create this kind of effect here. I'm just gonna quickly hook these rings back up um, like so. And again, this um, project will be available via Gumroad um, if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching. If you've got any queries, remember to email me in the description provided down below. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.